She was screaming as her head was being pulled out the window. And Chung came running up and out of his cloak he pulled a fish slicer, which he'd taken from the kitchens across the alley and he brought the knife across the girl's neck and chopped her head off and then he ran through Fantan Alley, he ran this way. I've discovered patterns and different things that, that make me curious about why Victoria is such a haunted place and I have now come to the conclusion that it's the most haunted city in British Columbia and I had no idea that stories about ghosts could be so exciting really wanted to go back out, but with every step he went a little bit closer, hoping to see what it was. He was almost where they were. Ah! <laughs> All of a sudden he fell flat on his face, and the men came running. They were angry and they pulled him up and grabbed him. I began a company nine years ago. I had worked for the government, but I started moonlighting and I started a company to tell ghost stories. And it became very popular and I finished with the government. I'm now a tour guide, ghost storyteller, and I do a lot of history tours, research and writing as well. But uh, the ghostly walks have become probably one of my signature pieces. People come, they want, they want ghost stories, and many people are coming to Victoria now just because of that. People walking through Helm Canale, whether it's daytime or nighttime, often hear footsteps and the sound of rattling chains. Of course, they're not sure who this is. They look back to see who it is, but they don't see anybody at all. And then they continue, but they hear the sounds again. And now they look back and they see a man wearing a gray canvas jacket and pants. His hands are held out. There are chains hanging from his wrists. There's a heavy chain dragging from his right ankle. People run this way, right into Bastion Square, and the man may follow them, but it's not likely because he's a ghost, a member of the chain gang from the 1860s from the nearby jail. And he's one of many ghosts that haunts Al Canale. The walls, the pavement itself, are filled with ghostly energy. People walking through here often suddenly feel cold. And in the area near the end of the alley, people feel as though their energy is suddenly pulled away from them. It's a negative vortex caused by a native burial that was destroyed many, many years ago when they built Port Victoria shattering glass, a tolling bell, screaming, something grabbing you by the arm, a sudden headache. These are the sorts of feelings that people have. So please go carefully as we head through the alley. I really didn't believe in ghosts when I was young, and to be honest, I'm not exactly sure that I believe in them now. I remain skeptical, but I know that there's something there because so many people have had experiences. I've had some experiences myself. My family moved from Ontario in 1960. I was 11 at the time and we rented a house just over there on the other side of Ross Bay Cemetery. And I spent a lot of time in here just walking through, going to the store on the other side. And I only had one really frightening experience one night and I was still quite young and a tree branch was waving in front of a street light. I thought it was a ghost on a tombstone. But apart from that, I spent many happy hours here in the daytime and at nighttime. It's a beautiful place. And I came, I think, to admire history so much because of all the, the names and the information I saw on the tombstones here. It really is a beautiful place that I, I enjoy being in very, very much. I've been telling ghost stories for a long time now and uh, part of uh, the awareness that people have of, of my tours is cumulative over the years, so part of it is word of mouth. But it's a combination of things, advertising, word of mouth, and good reputation as well, plus the fact that we've been in business for a long time. A handful of change rise up into the air and then fling down on the floor and scatter everywhere. My name's Alicia and I've been working with John for about three years. I respect his his work that he's done as a historian, I think he's very well respected and that lends a lot of um, a lot of truth to what we're doing. It's not just a try and scare people kind of thing, except for his little jumping out bit at certain points during the tour. It's, um, it's very credible. 
now people know me as a ghost storyteller and a collector of ghost stories, but I, I really simply want to be well known in Victoria for ghost stories. If I have any goal, it would be to expand those a little bit and, and do them all year. And I think if I can expand what I've already started just a little bit more, that will be certainly one of my goals fulfilled.